Tonight's guest is Lily Albert. Lily, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Well, it's great having you on. Thank you for your time. Lily, please give us a brief bio on yourself. Okay. Uh, I'm a nurse. Been a nurse for 26 years. I am a resident of Michigan, a lifelong resident. Got some experience with the military. I've heard the stories there, never believed it until I had my own experience here in Michigan. I have a kid, and my kid, he was there with me during this particular experience coming home from work. Yeah, people who are new to this dogma phenomenon, it's all too easy for them to think that you have to be out in the country to have an experience with a dogman, but as they're going to find out when they listen to your experiences, that's not the case. You had your dogman encounters in a place and most people would never think you'd have one. Please expand on that for us. It's making me nervous to even think about it, but right outside the city of Detroit, Right outside the city of Detroit, Michigan. Never thought I would see that. I've heard stories of it. Never thought I would actually encounter one myself. Yeah, like I just touched on, it's so hard to believe that people could have an experience with a dog man so close to a major metropolitan area like Detroit. But it happens. It does happen. Without telling us about your encounters, Lily, please tell us what your dog mean experiences have put you through. Oh, boy. Um, they kind of... Um, it's scary. I don't know what else to say. Uh... Excuse me a second. (laughs) We'll be right back. My experience or my experiences thus far, they have let me know that we are not alone. We certainly are not the only intelligent species here on this planet, along with the ones that they've already had a catalog. There are other beings on this planet that we all have yet to see. Some of us have seen them. Me being one. And it's, it's kind of difficult to process when you see it and, and then you have another encounter and you just have another one. And it's, it's oh, boy, oh, boy. It's real, people. It's real. It's made me really rethink what I've been taught. It's made me think, well, not think, I know that they are real. I know that they are watching us. And I'm going to take this a step further and say, I truly believe my dog man is protecting me or letting me know that he's here. That's all I can say on that as far as my experiences. And it is, oh boy, it's mind blowing. From the things you've told me about your experiences, this dog man just might be looking out for you and watching over you. It's hard to say. We don't know that for sure, but it's possible. How many people have you shared your experiences with and what was the fallout when you did? (laughs) I got left. (laughs) 
I was told I was crazy. I was told I need to go to the VA and talk to somebody. And I know I'm not crazy. I know I'm not. I know what I saw. That smell, you can never, you will never forget that smell. And that one day I had walked an afternoon ship. I just picked up the afternoon ship. And the more I think back on that particular day, it's like the more details I get. I just think back to getting ready for work. And I just remember the hair on the back of my neck just standing up straight. I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. I remember going to pick my kid up from school. I remember going to drop him off and then going to work. Now, this is where it really, really gets kind of strange. Driving home to go get my kid. The hair on the back of my neck just started standing up. And I, was, I wasn't even close to my home. I was not close to my parents' home to get a kid. I was still at my job and it just didn't sit well with me. I mean, the more I sit back and think, the more detail it becomes. It, it, it was like something was watching me. I don't know how you all, uh, you know how you can feel someone or something watching you and you turn around and it's nothing there. I was doing that at the job. And that, that, that just, it, it makes me think this thing had been watching me for some time. Now, let me take it back uh, before I even picked up the afternoon shift. Maybe two weeks prior to that, my kid was, he, he was in the back playing, you know, he and his buddies. And I went back inside and I, 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 they got quiet. I ran back to the back and they came running, hopping the fence because it was like a fence in the back where my, my truck was parked. And I just saw these three little people moving as fast as they could. And they ran right past me, ran into the house and said they saw a big dog. And I'm thinking somebody stepped in some dog poop and that smells bad. So what I did was I made all three of them take off their shoes and their socks, took it outside, hosed it down. And the smell was just horrendous. Put it in the washing machine. Six little pairs of shoes, little tennis shoes. The smell would not even come out of my washing machine. I had to take it and throw it away and buy another one. And I asked my kid, what did he see? And he could tell me it was a big black dog and he left it at that. So I'm thinking his mind could not conceptualize what he had saw. He just left it as it being a big dog. And the other boys, one little boy, he was a little more descriptive, but then I think he just chucked it off to it being a dog trying to stand up on his, that's what the baby said. The dog was trying to stand up on his hind legs and chase them and they ran. I think he was playing with them then. But that smell, those children brung to my home. That was just a minute smell of it. And imagine it getting in your washer and you can't get it out. It's bad enough when you have an encounter with a dog man when you're an adult, but for it to mess with those kids that way, to terrorize them the way it did, that's horrible. That is just not good. If you've had a dog man encounter and would like to talk with me about it, whether in private or on the show, please go to dogmanencounters.com and submit a report. If you've had a Sasquatch sighting and would like to be a guest on one of my two Bigfoot shows, please go to mybigfootsighting.com and let me know. All right, Lily, please tell us about your encounters now. I know it's not going to be easy for you to tell us about them, but please take your time. There is no hurry. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
driving home. I'm going to get in my car. We're driving down the main street. It takes us about a quarter of a mile to get to our actual block. But before that happens, I just got to tell you guys, you know, you're driving, you have to pay attention to the roads. And I'm looking on uh, my passenger side and there's this big parking lot, you know, with a few shops. One main shop was empty, so it was further back. Very well lit. And my kid, he goes, Mommy, Mommy, look at that, look at that. It looks like a big dog walking. And I didn't think anything of it, guys. I promise you, I did not think anything of it. I'm thinking it's late. I had to wake him up, get him dressed, to get him in the truck so that we can come on home. Now, here's the thing. I get one block before my street, and I actually see it. And I'm thinking it's somebody just, you know, playing games. So I turn on my block. And on my particular block, it's like um, there are businesses on the first part of the block, and then there are the residential homes. So in between the businesses and the residential homes, it's like a little, I can't say it's like an alley because it wasn't an alley. It was like a little thoroughway where you can drive through from one area to the next, like in between the two main streets, Miller and James Street. It was an area that you could drive through that separated the commercial buildings from the residential buildings. Now, as I turn, right there where you could drive through, where it's almost like an alley, there's a light, a light. And, and you know, I'm not driving fast. I'm driving slow. I'm doing maybe like 10 because I, I, like I said, I saw it, but I didn't see it. And I knew it was coming in my direction, the way it, it moved so fast. I mean, it, it's so fast. It's nothing like what these animals can run. It, it moved so fast because as you're driving, you have to keep up with traffic, right? So if an animal is running, a moving vehicle is going to go faster. This thing was right there as you stop. And it goes from like a little driveway, then it's the street, then it's my truck, and then it's there. This thing ran right in front of my truck. Now, I'm going to explain something to you. A Ford Explorer is 67 inches, or at least my 2000 Ford Explorer was 67.7 inches from the wheel to the top of the vehicle. This animal was maybe like three feet in front of me. And when I say it was tall, it was taller than my little bitty two-door Ford Explorer Sport. The fur was so beautiful. When I say it was shiny, it had a shiny coat. It was beautiful. The arms, the arms were so long it came past its kneecaps. The, 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 the chest, the chest was, it was so wide. It looked like an oversized bodybuilder. That waistline was very, very small. But when it got to like the butt part and, and, and all of that, you could tell. It was an animal, but the upper part was more human and the fur was, oh my God, it was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. The head put you in the mind of a chihuahua, but it was all black. And when I say it was ugly, it was ugly, but it was beautiful. The eyes, the eyes, oh my God, yellow, red, red, yellow, it, it, it just frightened me because I never saw anything like it. The arms were long. The, the, the fingers were, it's almost like it stopped right there because he wanted me to see it. But the arms, just think of a, a monster with long, exaggerated fingers and the nails were black. Everything that I saw was black except for the eyes and maybe a tooth. And that was picture perfect white. And I saw all of this 
in the dead of night. This thing was huge. It was huge. And it, it, it just, it, it, it was like it stopped in front of my truck, like to say, I'm here and I'm watching you and I know where you are. Baby, it scared the stew out of me. And my kid was like, mama, what is that? What is it? And I have no words for him. I had no words because I did not know what it was. And the moment that we got a good look at it, that's the moment it moved. And it happened so fast. It was almost like a split second. And when I say it ran, it ran very, very fast. And when I looked to the right, it was almost like it went down the backside of my apartment complex. And honestly, I didn't go home. I turned back around because I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't. I didn't. I did not know what to expect, y'all. I didn't know what to expect. I did not know what to expect. And the smell, I had my moon roof open just slightly. The smell from the sting. That's where I could place the smell that my kid and his friend stepped in to that creature there. It's not a pleasant smell, but the creature itself, the, the muscular, the, the, the way the muscles were built, it let me know that it's not from this, not from any animal kingdom here that we are aware of. Just the height the way it moved, the, 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 I don't even think a, a, a bodybuilder could take this thing on. And I'm going to take it a step further to say it had to have been, it had to have been about seven to eight feet. I know it was taller than my truck. And I know I had to put my face up to the windshield to look up to see its ears. That's how I knew it looked like or similar to that of a chihuahua because I really could not see its face because I was so focused on the chest part, the arms, the fur. The fur is what got me because it was black and it was beautiful and it was so shiny under that midnight light with the street light. That's what it was. I couldn't get the name of the word, the street light reflecting off of it. And it just, it kind of, it scared me guys. It scared my kid. It, it, it's, it's no words for it. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I can talk about it without actually crying because I've never seen anything like it. I don't know what else to say. It, if you ever come across one, you're going to smell it first. You're going to smell it. It's like a skunk, poop, uh, urine. Look, I'm a nurse. I'm going to say it had a fecal odor, a urine odor, an odor that's out of this world mixed with a skunk maybe a little sweat or something, because it was warm. It was warm. Maybe 80, 85 degrees with a slight little breeze. And when that breeze with my moon was being open, it was no way I could mistake this for what my kid had stepped in and what his buddies had stepped in. It came from that creature there, that one there. And, and to To be so close to the city of Detroit, I'm going to tell you guys, I was very ignorant because I thought this only happened in the country or on the countryside. I never thought these creatures would come to a major metropolitan area. But if we're tearing down where they live, where else are they going to go? How else are they going to survive? They got to live just like we do. And we got it. We must be coexisting because if, if this thing, if I saw this thing in 2000, I saw it in 2021, 
and I smelled it just yesterday, February 3rd, 2022. They are living here amongst us and they must be doing it peacefully unless we intrude upon them and their territory. Because if it's like a dog, it's got to be territorial. It's got to claim its space. And if we don't know what their space or their territory is, how are we to know? Maybe where I lived in Oak Park was its territory. Maybe where I parked my truck in the back of my apartment to my back door, maybe that was its territory. And even in my bathroom in Oak Park, I don't want to say that thing was outside of my bathroom window. And where I live now, guys, I am on a fifth floor with a balcony. I refuse to go on my balcony. I refuse. And I'm a person that's kind of outdoorsy. I like to go on my balcony. I don't care if we have the snow like we have it now, which is a couple of inches. I know this thing can crawl. I know it can scale a building. I won't open up my blinds to my balcony because I'm afraid. Because what I saw December 31st, 2021, I was in my bed asleep because I didn't work that night. But I felt something at my bedroom window. And it was not actually at my bedroom window, it was standing on the cement. Let me see if I can describe this. My apartment complex has a cement wall that separates it from another building. I'm looking at that wall now. That wall has to be about a good six feet. The dog man was standing on that cement divider. When I got up out of my bed, something said, look out the window. I looked out my bedroom window. There it was. Guys, this is 21 years later. December 31st, 2021. Now, mind you, my first encounter was August, I believe, 2000. We're 21 years later. Why would I wake up from a very wonderful sound sleep somber? And just go to my window and look out and there it is. Then I go to my extra bedroom and I look out the window. It looked like it followed me to this window that I'm in now. Then I went to my living room where my balcony is and it followed me there. And it did not move from its position. The head moved because I saw it move. Then I came back to the second bedroom. It was still there. Went back to my bedroom. It was gone. Oh, boy. You're doing fine. Take your time. There's no rush. (coughs) I'll tell you what, Lily. Let's take another break. We'll be right back. (laughs) Again, please remember, take your time. There's no rush here. Whenever you're ready, Lily, please continue. I did speak to my son about our 2000 experience. And he's now 29. But I believe he still has the concept that he had in his mind when he was a little boy. He says he remembers a tall figure and he shut down. He won't, he won't mention it again. He won't talk about it. He, he just, he'll say, Ma, I don't want to talk about that. That was a dark time and I don't want to talk about it. And he'll get, he just won't talk. He won't talk. So I think this did something. To his psyche, as far as animals go. You know, he was a kid that at one point in time, he wanted a dog. He doesn't want one now. 
And I'm trying to get him to change his views on that. That was just something that he happened to have saw. And he knows that it's, I would like for him to expand his mindset on thinking that there are other beings along the lines of animals that have not been cataloged by our scientists as of yet. And if they have been, it hasn't been publicized. So I want him to expand his mind on that, but I don't know how that's going to work. I really don't know because he won't talk about it. He thinks I talk too much about it, but we have to let people know that these creatures are real. They exist. They have some form of intelligence to let you know that they're around and they'll do things to let you know that they are around and that they do exist. Listening to your podcast, I'm so grateful I came upon it. I find that I'm not the only one. And with my few experiences that I've had thus far, I see I'm not the only one that he'll come back to just for whatever reason. Um, and I got to say this too, guys. As an African-American woman, I never thought I would have this experience. But I did. And we need to come up and start speaking out and letting everybody know that they are real. We do see them. And I just want to share my experience. I mean, forgive me for my tears, but it is frightening. And um, to see something that you normally don't see on a daily basis, unless you're watching something like a, a werewolf movie or something like that, it's unreal to you. Or to me, it was. It no longer is unreal because I know what I saw. I just got to get over my fear of crying when I talk about it because that, that look, it's just too much for what I, I, I guess I have to include myself in that the way that my son thinks because I've never seen anything like it, not even the werewolf movies or the creatures, they really can't compare to a dog man. They come close, but not what I saw. Not what I saw. Not what I saw. Dog men, as far as it looks, the closest that we will probably get to see them, if you've never laid your eyes on them, is maybe a werewolf. But for me, that doesn't even compare. Because it's more to what a dog man is versus what a man created from his view of what he thinks or whatever the, the, the werewolf is. That, that creation and I guess what I saw, they're similar but not, not quite the same. They're, they're not. They're not. They're not. I don't. I don't even know what else to say, guys. They. They are real. They exist. They are here. And they'll probably play with you. I guess like this one is doing me. And this kind of play, I don't like. It's. It's kind of scary. But with what I'm sharing. I kind of feel like a load is being lifted off of my shoulders. And I, I, I just know dog man is real, guys. He's real. He's out here amongst us. Vic, I don't know what else to say. I thought I would be able to have more to say. Oh, don't apologize. No, you've said more than enough. We've accomplished a lot here tonight just by having you come on and sharing those experiences with us. 
you do deserve so much credit for coming on and talking about these experiences, especially considering how much they traumatize you still. You said it had black claws, but how long were they? Oh my goodness. Um, they were long. They were long. They were pointed. And they were black. They were black like it's fur. Because I don't know if it was a male or a female. It, it just had long, long, skinny, or it looked to be skinny nails and fingers, the, the, the fingers. And see, that's what got me. You know, how could this be a dog, but you have like digits? That's what we call fingers, the digits. It had fingers. It, it didn't have like, you know how a dog has a, I guess, a paw? That's what I, I thought I would have saw. But I saw five individual fingers, and they were long and exaggerated with long, sharp, pointy, black nails. The nails were long. Put you in the mind of talons. You know how a bird has talons, but they curve over. Okay, this thing had long talons that that had like a slight curve, a slight curve. That's all I can tell you. I just know I saw long, exaggerated fingers with long, sharp, pointy nails. Nails. That's what I saw. And then the fur. Just imagine, I can't even say it's like um, a cat. It was just like the fur that's straight, that lays straight on the body and it doesn't hang off. It was like straight on the body. It was like, like a second skin, but you could look and see that it was fur just by, you know how the hair shines and you, you fluff it around. Okay, the hair did not fluff around. It was just there. And it was it was like a black, beautiful, shiny coat. It was beautiful. I don't know if you guys can understand when you see something that's different and, and it's kind of scary, but it's, it's yet it's still beautiful. I don't know if you can understand that. I'm trying to explain it the best way that I know how to. The ears were pointed. And they, they stood up. The snout, it wasn't as, as long as, you know, like a German shepherd. It wasn't as long as that. But it, it just imagine a black chihuahua. I think those things are black and white. But this was all black. And it was tall. And it had, like, muscles. Like a, a, a bodybuilder. Even the, I guess what we would call a thigh would be a hock. That was even like a dog. You know how you stand the dog up on its hind legs? That's what it looked like. And it didn't have a tail because I don't remember seeing a tail. I don't remember seeing a tail. I remember seeing that big hawk. That one was big. It was huge. I remember the, I guess the waistline, it was kind of small, but the, the chest, it was big. It was huge. And you could see the deltoid muscle. You could see that it was so prominent and it was just, it was big. It was, it looked like a bodybuilder with Anubis. How about that? Anubis. Are you guys familiar with Anubis? The, 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 I guess it's like a jackal creature that's got the body of a man with fur, but it's still like an animal and it had the, it stood up on its hind legs and, and that, that hawk. Oh my gosh. It's a lot to process. I know. You told us about how his fingers looked, but did you notice anything about his thumbs? I couldn't see that because, okay, the way it ran in front of my car, just imagine you sitting in your car and people are walking in front of your car to go across the street. Now that, the hand part, with the way as far back as my car was, I didn't see a thumb. I just saw the four fingers and when it ran 
you know how you move your hand up? That's when I saw it. And it was a quick glimpse of it because it moved so fast. It moved so fast. I didn't see the thumb, but I saw that nail, that that nail that let me know it had a fifth digit. That I did see because I was looking. I had to pay attention, but I did not actually see it like I'm looking at mine. You know how you run and you throw your hands up and you see your, you know, maybe like the four fingers and maybe the thumb. That's how I got a good look at it. But it was so quick that I couldn't really see it, but I knew it had five digits because I counted those five digits. I saw that. I saw the four digits better than I could see that thumb. How about that? And the only way I saw its eyes is because it turned its head to look at me. And then it turned right back and it just, it sped off. It moved. I've never seen any human or animal move that fast. You deserve so much credit for holding it together as well as you did. Yeah, most people would have fallen into pieces, but you didn't. You kept it together, and like I said, you deserve a lot of credit for that. When it was standing there in front of your truck, were you afraid it was going to turn it over? No, because I was praying. I was praying. I just said, God, keep me and my baby safe. Keep us safe. Keep us safe. But the way it looked, okay, now it's coming, okay. The way it looked, the way I described, you know, how you're at a stoplight and, you know, people have the right to walk past, just to walk past you. That's the way it was. It was like standing at sideways because it was going past me, but it stopped just for that, that brief moment so that I could get a good look at it. Now, I'm not going to say that I, I, I couldn't see the legs. I did see something of a calf, and it looked like that of a dog. That it did. Now, I didn't see the feet because it was dark, and the light from the street light, the way it shone down on the animal, all I could see was what I did see, and I wanted to try and see if I could see if it had paws. You know, the feet part, that I did not see. I did not see that part. But I know it stood taller than my vehicle. And my vehicle, 67.7 inches, that specification came from Ford. Because I even looked it up then when I got back to my mom's house in my little book that I had, you know, that comes with the vehicles. Because I wanted to know. If I was losing my mind, because what I had saw, it was taller than my vehicle. And yeah, if I think back on it, I think it could have picked my truck up and threw us both. Because I believe it was just that strong enough to do it. I'm glad you asked that. It was strong enough to do it because I, I only had a two-door Ford Explorer Sport. I didn't have the four-door. I didn't have the uh, Expedition. I didn't have anything big. Just something small for me and my kid. You know, something that small, a small vehicle, a small SUV. That's what I had. And it just, wow. He knew he could have done that, but he didn't do that. So please keep that in mind. Yeah, these guys normally do show a lot of restraint. As far as his face went, did he seem to have an expression on it? Kind of like, yeah, I see you. It didn't have like a smirk. It just had this, like a look of sarcasm. And it was in the eyes. The pupil was black. Then it had like, almost like a yellowish. You know how the sclera of a human's eye is white? Well, their sclera was not white. It was like a yellowish orangish color. Yellowish orange, yeah. Kind of like fiery. That's what made it even more frightening to look at. Because I guess we, and maybe some of our animals, the white part of the eye, that's called the sclera. I'm used to seeing a white sclera. And maybe if, if a person has hepatitis, their sclera would be yellow. 
but the yellow that this animal had, it was not that of that kind of yellow. It was like a fiery color. Scary, but beautiful. Because I'd never seen anything like it before. Never. Not even in the movies. Well, it goes without saying, I sure hope you never do see it again. When it ran away, you said it was blazing fast, but did it move smoothly or in an ungainly oh way? God. It was so graceful and smooth. It was so fast. It wasn't. It looks like if he had gotten on his, if it went quad pedal, it would have looked like that of an animal. But on. It's two or hind legs. It looked like it moved very smooth and gracefully and quick. Because it ran right in front of my truck, stopped for a minute, then it took off. And then it ran further down and it made a right, which was going into the direction of where I was going. It knew where I was going. It knew. Oh, I'm sure it did. Did it have a solid coat of black fur covering its body, or could you see its skin in places? I didn't see any skin. I saw solid, black, beautiful fur. I saw no skin. No skin. What I did see were the color of its eyes. And what stood out was the sclera, which was like a yellowish red color. Um, the nails, they were black. They were kind of dull. They were dull in comparison to the fur. The muscle, the muscles, that's what stuck out. The muscles and the fur. The fur was beautiful. It was so shiny. Under the the street light, I, I, I haven't even seen a dog like that yet. Up close, not with that beautiful black fur. I've not seen one yet, not yet. And I, I'm still waiting to see if I can see one before I die. And I am 55 years old. I'm going to wait until I see something with the beautiful fur coat like that. I don't think I'm gonna see it on any animal on this planet that's natural to this planet. I don't think I will. It wasn't the fur that's long or shaggy or that may, you know how you may see some dogs, the fur may stick to the skin and then maybe on the belly part, it may have little tufts of fur that may, you know, if it lays a certain way, it may have that crease right there. I didn't even see that. What I saw was like a big, overgrown chihuahua with exaggerated features. Yeah, I'd say exaggerated is an understatement. Its features were just unbelievable, it sounds like. Truly an understatement. I just can't think of another verb to quite describe what I saw. Oh, sure. No, I understand. It's really hard to explain seeing something like that. So, no, I think you've done a great job of explaining everything. You had your moonroof cracked, but your windows were up. Have you thought about how much more traumatized you would have been if your windows would have been down? Baby, let me tell you something. I probably would have died if my windows were down. I probably would have died from fear. Thinking he was going to get me, and I... I, I didn't even process that he could have gotten me then. It didn't even dawn on me that he could have taken my truck with me and my kid in it and just picked it up and threw us. I did not think of that until you mentioned it because I knew that it could with the muscles that I saw in those long arms. That's frightening. So I know I'm going to be up until I have to go to work tomorrow. I probably won't go to sleep until I get off work. What is it? Sunday morning. It's frightening at first glance, Lily, but please don't lose sight of the fact. He could have rolled your truck. He could have possibly thrown it. He could have broken the windows if he wanted to. But the good news is he knew he could have done all those things, but he didn't. 
He didn't do those things because he didn't want to do those things. Please don't lose sight of that fact. That's the pink elephant in the room that you need to do the best you can never to lose sight of. How close was the place where you had that first encounter from the nearest woods? Actually, it's funny that you ask. Right in the back of the townhouse that I was in, as you drive to the back, it was sectioned off by woods, a wooded area. And it was a big wooded area. And from that moment, August 2000, I think I stopped parking in the back. I always parked in the front. And I never allowed my son to play in the back. Now, if it were other children back there and I was barbecuing or it was a family back there barbecuing, yes, he could. But I would have to sit back there and watch. I would watch those woods because I did not know what was over there. I just remembered the smell and I knew what I saw when I drove home that night. I refused to let my son go in the back, even to the little school area that had a playground. He could not go over there. And the only way he could go over there is if my brother came to visit because I knew he kept some heavy artillery with him because he had an encounter himself in Ohio where he lives. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. So my son could not go to that area unless my brother came to Detroit from Ohio. And when I told my brother, he, he's the only one who believed me. He's the only one who believed me because I even teased him when he told me about his encounter. Now that I think about it, my baby brother is the only one who believed me. And when I cried in his arms, that let me know to never discount what another person says when they say they seen something that's otherworldly or outer-worldly. I never discount them since I've had my experience. See, you're making me think back even more, even more. My brother did have this encounter, but I think he had his in 98 when he initially moved to Ohio. And I never wanted to talk to him about it. And It's like now he'll call and he'll ask, hey, sis, how are you? Have you had any encounters? He hasn't called me in a couple of days. So he doesn't know about this that I had this morning. I don't think I'm going to tell him. I'm I'm just going to keep it just like this because I want him to listen to your podcast. That's what I want him to do. That's how he'll find out. But this here, it's, it's amazing. Now that I think back on it, with that smell and those big muscles, he could have taken us and thrown us. He could have. And then if he really wanted to, he could have gotten all three children and we would not have had a clue. That's right. He could have. But could. That's the key word. He could have. I never saw the babies move that fast. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure they were picking them up and putting them down. They did not want to go back outside to play. They stayed in the house with me. Yeah, I can't say I blame them. The night when you got out of bed and looked out your window, you said the dog man was standing down below on that concrete wall. Oh my God. I was in the bed. I was in the bed sleep, Dick. And... You know how you feel something staring at you. Well, that's the feeling that I had in my sleep, guys. Now, I'm single. There's nobody here in this apartment with me. And I'm on the fifth floor. I go to my window and I'm looking. So I focus on the back, the back wall. One, two, three, four, five. Six trees right there in this one spot, and I'm looking at it right now. I focus, and I see a figure that's not a tree. 
And it's no snow. It didn't snow December 31st, 2021. And it's well lit, very well lit. But this one spot, he hid where it was no light, but I saw him. You know how I knew it was him? And it looked like he opened up his eyes just a little bit bigger for me to see him. It was dog man. And guys, I got scared. I said, let me see if this is real. I came in my empty bedroom, looked out the window, and there he was. Didn't move his body, but his head turned slightly. Then I went to my living room, opened up those blinds, and yes, his head was turned completely. I would say to the left, because I was looking at him from the right. I had to turn my body to the right. So his head was completely turned. Then I came back to the middle bedroom. He followed me there. Then I went to my bedroom and he was still looking. And I just blinked and he was gone. But he was there. He was there. No, I didn't go over there because I told you I was going to go over there and look. No, I haven't been over there yet. Well, there's no hurry to do it. Whenever you're ready, that wall's going to be there. From what I understand, your grandfather gave you ominous warnings when you were a kid. What more can you tell us about that? Granddaddy was a Cherokee Indian. Granddaddy always told us stories about these dog-like creatures. And I would say, Papa, I'm never going to see that. And my Papa said, yes, you will, as long as we have a wooded area here in the state of Michigan. You're going to see one little girl. And I never believed my grandfather. My grandfather told me that, let's see, 1971, I was five years old. I didn't know what he was talking about. I knew nothing of what he was talking about. Had no idea. Then he and my great-grandfather, I kind of overheard my great-grandpa. He says sometimes they'll play with you a little bit. And when they play with you, Grandpa said that means they may like you. But great-grandpa said, no, that's not always true, son. That's not always true. Because if they want you, they're going to get you. You'd have lost a couple of uncles that way. So I didn't even know I lost family members to them. Now that I think back, my five-year-old self had no idea as to what they were talking about. But now that I'm 55, I know everything that they're talking about and I understand it. I just never thought it would happen to me. Never. Never in a million years. A Black girl from the city of Detroit having an encounter with a dog man. And not once, not twice. But three times, the third time, no, I didn't see him, but I did smell him and I knew he was there. Had a glimpse of him, but he moved so fast. So I don't know what it was, but I know I smelled him. This was yesterday morning when I walked home from my job. And I was so glad. (sighs) When I got to the building, Because the first time I smelled that smell, I said I would never forget it. And it was like, uh, let's see, how many feet? Maybe about 150 feet from my actual building. That's when I smelled it. And I said, oh, Jesus, please keep me safe. Keep me safe. But, you know, as I was walking home, the concrete or the cement little wall that we have, it goes all around the complex. And then there's like this landscaping business on one side of it. That's where I saw him. And that's like 150 feet from my door. And I, I, I just said, don't let him come and get me if that's him. Because I know that smell. And, and here I am with my, my heavy winter coat. I got my scrubs on, Uh, I got my Timberlands on, my scarf, my hat, my work bag, which kind of held me back because 
women, we put everything in our bags. You know, I had my stethoscope, everything that I needed for my job. And I said, here's this smell. I know I like to walk. And I do run. I don't think I can outrun this creature. I couldn't even think of outrunning the creature, even walking, you know, on the sidewalk. I said, if I got in the street, you know, I'm trying to think of different ways to protect myself. But he didn't get me. He didn't bother me. I just smelled his smell from the, you know, it was snowing this morning. And, you know, the wind was blowing. And in that cold air, I smelled that smell. I smelled it. I smelled that smell. I'm not going to forget it. I smelled it. I smelled it. He was here this morning. He was around. He was around doing what dog men do, unfortunately. You said that your son still doesn't want to talk about your encounter that the two of you had. Do you think he's ever going to be interested in speaking with me about it? I'm working on it. I am working on it. I just have to get him to where he's comfortable enough to want to go into detail about it. I'm working on it. I'm going to try my best because he can be the best person to back me up. He, I believe his mind at the time, I just think he, as a seven-year-old, could not conceptualize this as a living real creature versus what he's seen on, you know, television. That's what my thought process is about my kid as far as his not wanting to talk about this. But I'm working on trying to get him to open up and and give details on what he saw. And it's just going to be a hard, long process. I'm going to get him to do it. It's just going to take some time with him. Even if I can get him to draw it, if I can get him to draw it, I'm going to send it to you because he's, uh, he's an artist. If he can actually draw that, that would be a beautiful thing so that you can have something. Well, I think you got something close to it. What is it? I think it's, uh, Dogman 1966 or 96, something like that. Oh, episode 137. That's the closest. That is the true closest from my encounter. It's just that my dog, man, was not, his fur does not paint. But the bigness of him and what it actually is, yes, that's a good, accurate description. That is. Now, you have to remember my dog, man, that I saw, his face is more of that of a... a chihuahua where the snout is not, is it called a snout or is it? A muzzle. Yeah, the muzzle. It doesn't, it's not as long as a German Shepherd's or a Doberman Pinscher's. His was not as long as that. It wasn't. And the fur, some drawings that I saw, they do look like furry, furry dogs or wolves. This one was not. It wasn't. It was not. His fur was shiny and black, and it was um, short hair breed. That's what you call them, short hair. A short hair breed, not a long hair breed. A short hair breed of a dog, dog dog-like creature. His arms was long. The muscles you could see, it just looked like it lifted weights of, of some sort. Just looked nice and strong. It was big. It was dark. It was ugly, but it was yet beautiful in its own way. In its own way. And it gave me like a look of sarcasm. If you can understand that. Oh, I can. That fits. Sarcasm. That's what it looked like. Sarcasm. And I kind of can say I felt that along with the fear. If you can understand that, I mean, you can look at something and see, oh, oh, this is not what I am accustomed to seeing. I am afraid of this. It may kill me. 
but then it's facial feature, the eyes. The eyes is what got me. It was, you know how some people can look at you and talk to you with their eyes. They can laugh with their eyes and you can just look and see the happiness. I saw sarcasm. That's all I saw. And a little bit of intimidation because it was intimidating to see something that big. And you don't know where it comes from. And then you smell a smell and it's like, this is what my kid stepped into. What is this? Well, they're the masters of intimidation. Nothing does it like they do. So I get it. But having said that, it's about time for us to get out of here. But before we do, do you have any closing comments you'd like to share? Guys, don't wait 20 years to speak about it. Don't let it consume you, if people don't believe you, then leave it at that. If you know you saw what you saw, then you did see it. And if you need help or support, here's your open forum right here. If you got to do like I did to listen, to make sure you're not losing your mind and you find that your fellow human beings have seen the same thing, reach out. That's what I did and I do. I mean, I can actually talk about it without doing a lot of crying. Because I found somebody that believes me other than my son. And that makes me feel good because I know my story is going to be shared and I hope everybody just starts speaking up so that, you know, the world can know that these things are real. And you got to know it's real because you've got testimonies from people on his page, his channel. And no, you're not crazy. You did see it and it is real because I know I'm not crazy. That's all I can say, guys. And thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing those experiences with us. Hey, you're definitely not crazy. I don't want you to believe that for a second. You had some unfortunate experiences you never asked to have, and you're just dealing with those in the best way you know how. So I think you deserve a lot of credit for that. I just didn't think I would see him again. After the first encounter. Well, you never think it's going to happen until it does. Unfortunately. Well, thanks again so much, Lily. Have a great night. Mm -hmm.